All right, we are three weeks away from what the city of Seattle is calling the period of maximum constraint or Seattle squeeze. That's when the viaduct shuts down for three weeks, January 11th, before the opening of the brand new Seattle Tunnel. And we have a lot of ways you can stay informed during the closures. We have a special section on our website, text tunnel, the word tunnel, to 206-448-4545, and we will send you a link. You can also join our Facebook page. Just search for Seattle Tunnel Traffic. I am here now with Council Member Mike O'Brien to talk about what this will mean for us and how we navigate it, literally. And I have to tell, thanks for being on the show, Mike. Of course. Mike. I have to tell you, on this issue, I think I have been like this. I'm kind of in a denial phase. Understand it. Is that pretty consistent? Like, or, I know you're out there beating the drum trying to get us to listen. Yeah. You know, um, we have a lot of really great things coming transportation wise. You know, the tunnel's going to open. We have new light rail going to Northgate in a few years. But we have some pain that we're going to have to endure between now and then. And it's understandable why folks want to cover their ears and say, I don't want to address the reality. But it's coming really soon. And what I'll tell you, like a lot of challenges, if you take a few minutes to think about and plan out some alternative okay. strategies, I think we're all going to be better off. Right. And even if you don't take the viaduct to get to work, the impact is still going to be felt everywhere. Yeah, this isn't just for folks that use the viaduct or even just folks that work in Seattle. You know, 90,000 trips on that viaduct every day disappear. Uh, they, well, they don't disappear. The viaduct oh, no, goes I away. I know what you mean, yes. And uh -huh. so a lot will go to I-5, and that means people that are on I-5 may shift over to 405. And so it's going to have a ripple effect throughout the region. So even if you don't come anywhere near the city of Seattle, for those three weeks, um, you're going to have a different commute. And we really want folks to think through some strategies about how they can lessen the pain. And I really want folks to think of this as a kind of community crisis. And what I mean by that is we all have something we can do to help the collective be better off. Some people may not be able to change much of their habit at all. Mm -hmm. Some people can do more. And think about this as what can we do for the common good. Oh, that's a really good way of thinking about it. And considering that I remember several months ago, there was talk about we're going to try to get employers on board, letting people work from home more. How is that effort going? It's going really good. We're having mm -hmm. a lot of conversations with employers. You know, employers in this region have a lot of creative ideas on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We're saying use that creativity for your workspace and transportation. So even the city of Seattle, for City council meetings, we are going to move our start times back from 9.30 to 10. Okay. So city workers who need to be at those meetings can maybe come in on a bus line at 9 in the morning, uh, a little after the rush hour for citizens that want to come to meetings similarly. Okay. Um, you know, we're asking folks to show some flexibility. Maybe, uh, you know, if you can work from home, that's great. But maybe you work in a place you can't work from home, but maybe you could check emails for an hour in the morning and commute in a little later. Or maybe you get up at 6.30 and commute in when the buses aren't so crowded. Right. Those little changes can make a big impact on, on your commute and everyone else's commute. Okay, anything else you want us to know in terms of how we prepare, what to expect, anything that we, I know you talked about maybe considering taking the bus, carpooling, working late, anything else? The, the, the main thing is I ask folks to do is make a plan. Okay. Um, don't put it off to the last second. So, you know, talk to your employer. Can they give you some flexibility? Um, maybe it's just, I, I really need my car most days, but maybe one day a week you can figure out how to take the bus. Or maybe you're a summer bike commuter and you don't commute in the winter and look at the weather report. There's going to be a sunny day in January. I'll bike commute that one day and just be one less person on the road. Yeah, I have to admit, I was, again, I was that person that just thought, okay, it's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. It's at one street. But when I think about how sometimes in Seattle it can take an hour to go a couple of miles. A little hiccup can cause a lot of pain. Okay. And we got a big hiccup coming. Yeah, all right. Well, we appreciate you um, keeping us informed on this and reminding us to pay attention. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Michael Bryan. Make from some Seattle one City of your Council. Seattle or New Year's resolutions to fix this. Oh, I love it. January 11th. <laughs> that's the date this goes down. January 11th, okay? Mark your calendars, make a plan now. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Let's go to Chris.